Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I want to share one of the lessons from my most recent online course called 3D Lettering in Procreate. So I'm sharing one of the beginner basics lessons on how to create a peeling sticker lettering effect in Procreate. So you'll see the three videos that make up that lesson and on screen I'll leave a link to the full course if you'd like to go and check it out. There are five beginner basics lessons that introduce you to all the essentials that you'll need to know to create 3D lettering in Procreate, and then the advanced lessons kind of stack those techniques, as well as adding additional ones to create some really stunning kind of pop off the screen effects. So here we go with the peeling sticker lettering effect. In this project, we're going to be creating some sticker kind of lettering. So it looks like our lettering is stuck to a page, but it's lifting up just like a sticker would. And we make this really believable with some handy tricks with our shadow. So you can see that the shadow is kind of distorted right here, and it makes it believable that your lettering is kind of lifting up. And you can see that it disappears completely at the base of this lettering. We've also integrated a tricolor ombre or gradient effect. So you can see we've got a nice highlight up at the the top, our middle ground color, and then we've got some dark color at the bottom where it's affixed to the surface before it's starting to lift up where the color is much lighter. So once again, I'm going to create a screen size document and then I'm going to give you all the colors and we'll get started. Okay, so jumping over to these colors, we're only using three colors for this one, which makes it super easy. So this is our background color, the hex for our background. This is our main lettering color, and this is a highlight color that we're going to be using. All right, so we're just going to drag in our background color to start things off, and we'll label this one background. And now we're gonna create our lettering layer. So I'm gonna label this one stuck. And I'm going to grab our middle color, this teal color right here. I'm also going to grab the mono weight brush and I'm going to make the size kind of large so you can see it really well on screen. And I'm just going to letter out stuck. Okay, so I've got my lettering. I'm going to make it a little more centered here so we can see it really well. So the first thing we're gonna do is apply that ombre or that tri-gradient effect. So in order to do that, my method is selecting your lettering. So just tap on your layer thumbnail, choose select. So just your lettering is selected and then create a new layer right above it. And now we're going to grab our light color right here. We're going to set this blend mode to overlay. So it blends really nicely into what's underneath it, but acts as a highlight. So we're gonna choose overlay right there. And we're going to grab a soft brush for this because we want that to be really, really subtle, that gradient as it goes from one color to the next. So we're gonna hit airbrushing and grab our soft brush and we're gonna make it pretty big. And you can see when we start painting up here, we're getting a soft highlight up at the top. And I actually think I can go even larger here. Let's go a little larger, yeah. So you can see how nice and bright it is up at the top. And if you ever wonder what your layer is looking like, just come over here and you can see where I've painted the white right up here. So now we just need to add a little darkness to the bottom of our lettering. I'm gonna label this one highlight. And now we're going to do the dark part of our gradient. So our base lettering is still selected right here, so we can utilize that while we're here. So we wanna create a brand new layer. So tap on your original lettering layer, create a new layer right above it. We're gonna label this one dark gradient. And we're going to change the blend mode on this one to multiply. So whatever's underneath it, it's going to blend in a dark way. Whereas overlay blends in a light way, multiply blends in a dark way. I'm going to tap on the N and hit multiply and we're going to choose the exact same color as our lettering. But since we have a multiply blend mode applied to it, it's going to appear darker. So once again, I'm using the soft brush and I'm on my brand new dark gradient layer and I'm just going to paint down here and you can see how it's getting darker at the bottom. But I still want to make sure that I'm getting some middle ground color right here, which it looks like I am. All right, so that is our tricolor gradient. So we're all set so we can deselect now. Since the shadow is coming off of our lettering, we need to create some dark lettering that is exactly the same as this. So we're going back to tricks we've already utilized in past videos. We're going to select our lettering. So select it, and then we're going to make a copy of it underneath it 
that's a different color. So we're going to tap on our background, create a new layer right above our background. We're going to label this shadow and we're going to select our darkest color, which is this background color, but it's not going to show up on the same colored background. So we need to change the blend mode of this layer. So tap on the N, change it to multiply so it'll appear darker. And now we're going to fill this. So tap on your thumbnail and choose fill layer. So now if I turn off my original lettering, you can see it's dark right underneath it. So we're all good to go there. And now we need to distort our shadow. And in order to do that, make sure it's selected and then select it up here. And now down here, you wanna choose warp. And when you do this, you can drag these individual components of this grid to warp your shadow into the shape that you'd like it to be. So if I grab this corner node right here and I drag it slightly, you can start seeing that shadow appear pulled in this direction. And I wanna keep pulling all these top sections in the same direction in the same amount as this one. So I'm looking at the curve of this line and I'm dragging this one in a very similar curve. So everything is consistent. All right, so that's all you wanna do here. If you touch anything down here, it's going to start dragging it off of the bottom and we want our shadow to match up with our bottoms because it's starting to lift up and we'll lose that effect if we drag these other parts of our grid. We only wanna to touch this top section of our grid. I actually think I'm gonna make my curve a little less severe here. All right, so once you're happy with your warp on your shadow, you're going to deselect it. And now it's coming nice and close. And now we wanna blur our shadow to make it even more believable that the shadow has a decent distance from where our lettering's kind of lifting up. So once again, we're still on our shadow layer right here. And then you're gonna to come to your magic wand, you're gonna choose Gaussian Blur, and you're just going to increase this until it feels nice and believable as a shadow. So I'm at about 12% right there, and that feels pretty good. All right, so if I zoom out, that's all looking great. So the only problem with this is down here, you can see that some of the shadow is peeking through, and we don't want any shadow peeking through down here because this is the part of our lettering that is still stuck to the surface. This is the part that's pulling up, so it makes sense that we have a shadow that's lifting off of our lettering, but down here where it's still stuck to the surface, there shouldn't be any shadow because it's still stuck. So in order to remove those in a believable way, we're going to apply a layer mask. So first of all, I have a full video on masking in Procreate. I will leave a link right below this video to that video if you want some more information, but I'm going to kind of summarize um, what I talk about in that longer form video right here. So when it comes to masking, it's a non-destructive form of editing. And what that basically means is wherever you would normally erase something away, you can mask it away, which is basically hiding it temporarily. So when you erase something, it's destructive editing because once it's erased, you can't get it back unless you redraw it and then you're trying to match up lines, um, especially with lettering, that could be really difficult. When you mask something, instead of erasing it, you're hiding it. So you're putting a mask on it and you can always bring it back later. You don't have to redraw it. So the way that works is by using black and white. And what you always wanna remember when you're masking is black conceals and white reveals. So when you apply a mask to a layer, whenever you paint in black on that mask, you're hiding elements of that layer. Whenever you paint in white, you're revealing those previously masked areas. So I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like because I know that that can be really confusing, but this is such a powerful tool. I promise it's worth experimenting, really understanding how it works because it'll save you so much time in the long run and your files will be far more workable and easier to edit later on. I use it all the time when I'm adding flourishes or foliage details to my lettering that I want to overlap or underlap certain elements. It's super, super powerful. So just take my word for it. Please don't give up on it, even if it sounds a little confusing right now. So what I want to do is I want to apply a layer mask to the shadow because I want this bottom part of the shadow to disappear, but I don't want to erase it because if I accidentally erase up into here, then I need to start all over again. So in order to do that, we're gonna to come to our shadow layer right here. You're gonna tap on it 
and choose mask. And you can see right now it's all white, which means everything is revealed because white reveals. Now, anywhere that I paint in black on this mask, black conceals, so it will hide portions of the shadow. Whenever you apply a layer mask to a layer, it's tied directly to that layer. These two are linked. So whatever I do on this layer mask is directly affecting whatever layer it's linked with. So when you're using a layer mask, you're painting in either black or white and you're using a brush. So I've got my brush right here and I want a soft brush because I want to very softly hide this bottom part of my shadow. So I need to paint in black instead of white. So if I come over here to my white, let me get back to my disc, I can get true black by just double tapping down here and it'll grab true black, which is exactly what I need. I've got my brush. I'm making sure that my layer mask is selected. If my shadow were selected, it would look like this. This is my layer mask selected. And now if I paint very lightly on the bottom parts of these letters, you can see that my shadow has disappeared. That dark shadow is gone, but it still remains up here. And you can see that it's actually disappearing a little bit up here because my brush was so big. And if I want to bring that back, because now I've got too much that's disappearing right here, I can just paint in white instead. So I can double tap where the white is, and you can see on my layer, this is what my mask looks like. This is where I painted in black. So if I'm painting in white now, I've got my brush, I've got white, and I'm making sure my layer mask is still selected. If I paint here, you can see that it brings it back. So I can paint over here and make sure all of my shadows that I want to appear are appearing. All right. So I just want to make sure my brush was definitely too large when I began masking, so I'm going to reduce the size of it and just remove these bottom areas that I don't need anymore. So I'm going to come back over here, double tap on the black so I've got true black selected. I'm still on my layer mask and I just want to make sure that these areas don't have any shadow on them. So you can see how powerful this is. I'm not redrawing any shadows. I'm just hiding it and revealing it using black and white. So you can see how nicely that works out. And I can always come back and forth. If I got rid of a little too much, I can always paint in white later on to bring it back. All right, so that's looking really good. We've got our shadow gone from the bottom part, but we still have it nice and distorted up here to give this effect that it's peeling off. And just to finish everything off, we're going to add some extra backlighting just to bring everything forward. So down here, I'm going to select my background layer, create a new layer above it, and I'm going to grab my lightest color right here. I've got my soft brush selected. I'm just going to tap once on here. Actually, I'm going to reduce the size of that first, and then I'm going to tap once and then I'm going to select it. I still have warp selected down here, so make sure you change this back to freeform, and then you can stretch it out just the way you're used to. So I'm going to make this nice and soft and big. And obviously this is way too bright right now. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity, just so it's not so strong. I just want this nice and subtle, and that's looking really good and I'm going to label this glow. Okay, so that finishes up our beginner basics series. And you can see we've got all of our shadow gone right here. And we can also see where everything is a little easier now that we've got that glow back there. I might remove a little bit of my shadow right here. So I can always come back to my layer mask. It's already on black and I can just take a little bit more of that away if I want. So that is how to create a sticker peeling effect with your lettering. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that peeling sticker lettering effect. And if you'd like to learn more about my online course, 3D Lettering in Procreate, the link is on screen and also in the video description for you to learn more and check out all the different projects. This is an entirely project-based online course. There are 11 total projects. So if you'd like to check that out, the link is on screen and in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and don't forget to head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com for even more Procreate 
create and lettering and design tutorials and freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.